Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 it says the harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved man call lame lie I will buy shimmy out shy also give it the bonus LGMS honest at Akiam and peace and bless to you brothers and sisters that listen a whole full elect you know just going through some precepts and remember the scripture right here man because it's just fitting for the time period right now especially with all you know <clears throat> a lot of dudes minds have went astray you know they have uh, ulterior motives as far as you know trying to build for a better future in Babylon well <laughs> we reading what the prophet Jeremiah said man in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 he said the harvest is past which the harvest was during a time I think around um, not in our time like from like May to September okay because when you look it up winters in Jerusalem was like from October to um, to March okay but you know their winters is technically our fall you see and you know the harvest time is when you would gather your crops to prepare for the winter all right so the scripture says the harvest is past the summer has ended all right like we said we in autumn time right now all right and we are not saved man okay we're looking to be saved we looking to be delivered we're looking to get the hell out of here man we don't have no long-term goal that's asinine that's foolish man Okay, everything is out of course. Israel is out of course. The majority of these Negroes and Hispanics have lost their mind. Okay, they're totally consumed by the left hand. And the only remedy is the Most High has to extract that spirit out of that body, man. That tabernacle, man. Because they're sick. The longer we stay here, the worse we'll get, man. You're wearing tear on us, man. This place that we've been here for, what, 400 years, man? All right. So we looking to get saved, man. We are yet not saved. You know, right? That's what we do in these videos. We pushing and we trying to gather the elect. Alright? Oh, and that's spiritual too, because we know harvest. Like we said, the fruit we're trying to gather is the elect, man. Alright, that's the fruit. Matter of fact, let me get that precept. John chapter 4, verse 34. There's many scriptures like that. Alright? John the Baptist said, bring forth fruit me for repentance. Okay, and John the Baptist was in that spirit too, man. Oh, man. Let me read this first. John 4, 34. Yahweh Shai said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What was Yahweh Shai's will, his ultimate goal or purpose? To finish the will of the Father, man. Right, which was to um, seal the elect and die for their sins. He died for the nation of Israel's sins. Starting with the elect first, man. He sowed the main seed. Okay? He said, Say ye not ye, these are the four months, and then cometh harvest. <laughs> Spiritual, man. Alright? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Gather the fruits. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Which we know that fruit are what? The elect or the one third. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Which you may know Yahweh Shah is the one when you mark the fourth chapter, he sowed that seed, man. And now we're reaping the fruits. Alright? And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereupon he bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and he had entered into their labors. Yeah, which you can go, you know, deeper into that. The prophets started, you know, um, Yahweh Shai, the prophets, and then the apostles came into their labor. And take it 2,000 years later, you know, the apostles on down, you know, every man is back into their lot. We entered into their labors, man. And we gather what? Fruit for the what? The harvest time. Okay, so that's Revelation 11, chapter 2, man. Okay, the harvest is ripe, man. He also said the work is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we entered into other men's labor. Okay, and matter of fact, we get Luke chapter 18. 
In fact, let me get one more on the, on the harvest. Okay. You know, that word harvest just kind of stood out. Um, and this is the harvest time. Spiritually and um, when you go through the different seasons. But let me read this. Matthew chapter 13. Verse... Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that soweth good seed into his field. But while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But spiritually, you know, which that happened to us, slept when we went into captivity, man. You see, tears were sowed amongst our nation. Anyway, it says, when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence they have tears. Okay. And he said unto him, An enemy have done this. Yeah. When they spoiled our people, man. And how we gather and separate the tears from the wheat is through the word of the Most High. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, nah, lest we gather up the tares, he root up also the wheat with them, because they look alike. He said, let them both grow together until the harvest, which the harvest, when you read Revelation 11 chapters, Yahweh Shai is making the second coming to gather his fruit. We're going to read it in the same verse. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, the angels, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, man. So, you know, we got physical tears amongst our nation, people that really um, are really heathens and also spiritual tears. man. you Jakes who don't want to repent, um, you Jakes don't do, who don't want to inherit your blessing, man, you spiritually Edomites, man. OK, because you're, you're carnal, man, the carnal man receiving not the things of the most high, you see, and bind them in bundles to burn them. You have your portion with the non-believers and the heathen. All right. But gather the wheat into my barn, man, eh, to be saved. All right. And scripture. So this is the harvest time, man. Eh? But like I was going through earlier, like the, the scripture in Jeremiah said, we are not yet delivered. All the prophets would just desire, which they were back in a lot. But back then they desired for all of these things to happen, man. Okay. That scripture says, hasten the day. They were all... In fact, let me read that first, Luke 18, 8, and continue on. Luke 18, verse 8. It says, this was a parable. I'm going to jump straight to the point. It says, Luke 17, verse 7, And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he be along with them? Okay, the prayer of a righteous man pierces the clouds, man. So the Most High hears our cries, man. He says, I tell you, he shall avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And a lot of men have lost faith. You know, they have a, a deadline in their mind. If the Lord don't come through on that time, they end up um, falling back into the world. Okay. They return back to their vomit, man. Because the Lord didn't come on their timing. You see, which you're supposed to be crying out to the Most High day and night. Make his ears heavy. To get the hell out of here, man. To be saved, man. Because that was our people's mindset. When you read Jeremiah 8 chapter, they are catching hell in Babylon, man. Subject to a, a different uh, ruler. Subject to their God. Subject to their idols. Subject to their way of life. Their culture. Same thing here. This is the new Babylon, man. Which Esau is the Pharaoh that's ruling this place, man. This is a this is Babylon, this is Egypt, this is Assyria, this is Sodom and Gomorrah, all those kingdoms. Alright. One big conglomerate in um in one, man. It's a cohesion of all those empires. And this is our last captivity. We're not gonna be stricken anymore after this, man. So, like the scripture says, hasten the day, you're supposed to 
pray earnestly for things to come quickly, man. I can't stress that enough, man. That's supposed to be our mindset, man. All right. That was the apostles' mindset. That's what they asked the Lord. Would now that this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? That was John the Baptist's mindset when he got locked up. That's what he said. Should we look for another? Because everybody thought the Mashiach was going to bring the kingdom two thousand years ago, man. It wasn't set up for him to come. I mean, to deliver. He had to die first to redeem Israel back to the Father. Now he's coming back to collect his wheat. There's fruit. All right. So we're close, man. Now ain't the time to get weak and, and, and seduced. And like we said, we have things to do. We have bills to pay. We have to work. See what I'm saying? But we're not looking farther than that, man. So we said, have no thought of tomorrow. Okay. Like Yahweh Shai said, my will is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work, man. And not only us went the kingdom, Israelites who pass away on this side in the spiritual realm is asking the most high win. Okay? Matter of fact, let me get that. Revelation the sixth chapter. Revelation chapter six, verse nine. Revelation six and nine it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High. Our brethren that died, man. And it's truth, man. Okay? And even regular Israelites, man. When they wake up and they write, state of mind. For the testimony which they held. And they cried with that loud voice saying, How long, O oh Lord? When? When? You're going to take this man down, man. When you going to establish righteousness back in the earth, man? When is righteousness is going to flourish? The new heavens and the new earth. Okay? Because um, underneath a wicked ruler, the people mourn. You see? And if, uh, the, like the scripture says, um, if, if a ruler hearkens to lies, then um, if, a, if a ruler is wicked, then so is his servants. Okay? The world is underneath a wicked vibration. Alright? That's why Yahweh Shai said, My kingdom is not of this world. So, Israelites in the spiritual realm are saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, doest not thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? They're asking the same question. How long, man? All right, and we know through the Spirit, <laughs> Ezra's asked the same question too, man. Matter of fact, I'll pull that real quick before I get to the Psalms that I really want to read. Second Ezra chapter five, verse forty. The Spirit Ezra's is in. Right, even though the angel you had to check him a couple of times because he wanted to haste above the most high. It says Second Ezra chapter five verse forty. Then he said unto me, Like as thou canst do none of these things I have spoken of, even so canst thou not find out my judgment or in the end and the love that I have promised unto my people, when we in the end. Eyes have not seen or ears heard, but the Lord got prepared for those that love him, man. It says, and I said, behold, O Lord, yet art thou nigh unto them that I'll be reserved till the end. See, they all, everybody wanted to know when is the end coming? And what shall they do that they have been before me? Or we be that now. See, so you read that again. It says, unto them that be reserved till the end. And what shall they do that have been before me? Or we that be now. Or they that shall come after us. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring. Like as there is no slackness of the last, and even so no swiftness of the first. Everything happens in its own appropriate time. So I answered and said, Couldest thou not make those that have been made and, and be now, and that are for to come at once, that thou might show thy judgment the sooner? He wanted, he said, Listen, I don't understand that. But can't you just make everything happen all at one time right now? So can we can receive that love that you promised your people from the beginning. He wanted everything to happen right away, man. That was his mindset, man. Make everything happen sooner, man. I wanted everything to happen now. Okay, I want to be delivered now, man. I want to see Israel stop suffering. Okay, because Ezra's is in constant depression because he saw what happened 
to our people, man. He saw the temple was destroyed. He saw what the Babylonians had done. He saw the ruins of Jerusalem, man. That was the, um, the, the second rebuilding of the temple during the time of Ezra, Haggai, Zechariah, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, Joshua, Mordecai. You know, they restored the temple, man. So he started the state Israel was in, man. And Israel is in a worse state today, man. Majority of our people don't even have a clue who the hell they are, let alone a temple, let alone Yahweh Shai. They don't even know their nationality, man. They think they're Americans. Some of them think they're Pan Africans. Some of them think they're black, right? A lot of our people are, um, are pansexuals, man. Been seduced by um, Hollywood, been seduced by TV, the internet. You see, they totally lost and far gone, man. Okay, they they intoxicated with the wine of Babylon. See, and the longer we stay here, the worse they're going to get, man. See, and this is why, like I said, let me read Psalm seventy-nine. So we're not yet delivered, man. No, we're praying that things that happen speedily. The same spirit Ezra was in. Let me read this of Psalms by Asap. He said, Almost high, the heathen are come into thine inheritance, thy holy temple, and have defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. Which uh, proves this is a prophecy. Because Asap was one of the singers of the temple during the time of David, who had a prophetic spirit on him. And this didn't happen back then. So this is a prophecy that he's saying. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heavens. The flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like the water round about Jerusalem. There was none to bury them. We are becoming reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. This is why the scripture also tells you that in the... Um, that's what they say in the book of Lamentations. It said the same thing. Is this what men, uh, Jerusalem, is men would call the perfection of beauty? All right. They wag their head, man. Same thing now when they see you Israelites in the, um, the projects and the ghettos and you're filling up the prison system. All right. And you, you're, you're performing whap. See what I'm saying? You're a reproach, man. You're a byword and a proverb. Anyway, let's read on. It says, a scorn to derision to them that round about us. How long, O ye how about Chanel shot? That's the question he was asking. And we weren't even captivity when he um when the psalm was written, man. This is a, a prophecy that he saw. Will thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen. See? And we coming into that time. The most is about to pour out that wrath. Esau's about to drink that cup. Okay. Blood is about to pursue as it turns to Ezekiel the thirty fifth chapter. That have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. Right, all of these kingdoms, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place where they did back then in the temple, and today, when we went in captivity, slavery, the whole world was in on it, man. Keeping us down, man. Psalms 83rd chapter. But remember not against us former iniquities, let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low, man. Help us to almost high our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. That's where Yahweh Shai come in. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is their power? Let them be known among the heathen in thy sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sighting of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we thy people and the sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations, men. And we're doing that right now, leading up into the kingdom, man. All right? We're showing forth um, the praise of Yahweh Bashim El Shah um, throughout all generations, man, because we got the truth back, man. All right, and we're gonna do that in the kingdom, you see. But, um, he said that the sign of the prisoner come before thee were prisoners, okay. All right, he said that let the um, avenge our blood, um, 
from um from among the heathen, man. Okay, and like we said, that didn't happen back then. They didn't vow with Jacob back then. King David had everybody in subjection, so this was a future prophecy, man. And he was asking the Most High, "How long? You see, how long are you gonna be angry with us, man?" But now we receive mercy, Lord willing. Um, you know, the hopeful elect who receive mercy because we all called. All right, we just looking to be chosen, man. All right, that's why even Jude. I'm gonna close it out this precept here, the book of Jude, chapter one. So that's the, the main question all the prophets asked, man, was how long, man? Okay? How long, man? Alright? How long are we going to remain in derision or at the bottom? Right? Like ASAP was asking. Alright? Like Psalm 79 chapter was going into. Not only the Babylonians, but also during the time of the Greeks and the Romans. Where right? they desecrated the temple as well. Alright? But now, this is a spiritual temple that's being built. Let me read the book of Jude. I'm going to close it out. Jude chapter 1. Let me see verse 15. It says, let me start up. Jude chapter 1 verse 14. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh when ten thousands of his saints, man. Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Yahweh Shai. To execute judgment upon all. Right? Yahweh Shai, like the scripture says in 1 Peter 4 and 5, is coming back to judge the quick and the dead, man. All right? The righteous, the wicked. Every eye shall see him, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Right? Scripture says, uh, Every eye the word men shall speak. They have to give an account of the day of the, um, their, their of in the day of judgment, man. You see, especially guys who fell out this thing. It says, verse 21. Me, um, verse 20 but ye O oh you beloved the elect building up yourselves on your your most holy faith praying in the Holy Spirit the Rakakwadash keep yourselves in the love of the most high looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai unto eternal life that's what we're looking for man the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai man unto eternal life immortality man okay so we asking the same question man how long man okay we want shit to go down i gotta bring out another video to spirit how about you man shot on uh you know esau claiming it's gonna be the darkest winter you know um we know what that means man All right we know it's gonna be famine riding probably a emp attack man a whole lot of shit gonna be going down man Right, so we got to prepare ourselves mentally and spiritually, man. Okay, this is the road we have to take in order to get to the other side. Just did a video on that, all right? So, that must say, call name, Lai Halba Shah, Shalom.